Okay, so we're going to start the meeting. This is a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen. It is Wednesday, December 2nd. This meeting is at 4 o'clock. It will run from 4 to 6 o'clock if you need that much time. We have invited the Board of Finance to join us for this meeting, um, and it is a continuation of our review of various options and scenarios regarding the Country Club of Woodbridge property. Um, I just want to make one uh, side comment about the timing of the meeting. I understand that Sir Woodbridge suggested that there was something uh, improper or nefarious about a four o'clock meeting. I just want to remind everyone it was done to accommodate the schedules of some of our members, particularly Maria, who couldn't make it, and we wanted to make sure that everyone attended the meeting. So uh, that's the reason for the four o'clock meeting. And in fact, we also find that sometimes four o'clock works for people better who want to attend meetings, but that was not the reason. It was to accommodate selectmen. Um, so as I said, it's very important that as we go forward with the Country Club of Woodbridge, that we have a good understanding of facts and proposals that are before us and that are possible for the town so that the selectmen and the town residents can make informed, wise decisions going forward. Um, at our last meeting, we reviewed six different scenarios and um, five of them were scenarios that had been prepared, well, four of them were uh, prepared by Toll Brothers. One was a request that had uh, been made to Toll Brothers, as I understood it, but Toll had not um, pursued that one. And we also had an open space option. At the last meeting, it was requested that Toll Brothers come in and that we review some of these with them so that uh, any questions about the proposals can be answered. So um, Toll Brothers is with us today, and I thank you for coming. Do you want to come up to the table here, please? Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Um, <clears throat> we're going to show the chart and the, um, the schematics for the proposals that we reviewed last time, as we did last time, they'll be up on the screen here. And um, I welcome questions from the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance members who have joined us. As Betsy's getting set up, the um, first option, which we called option A, was the original proposal from Toll Brothers. It uh, was for $7.5 million, and the proposal was to build 170 active adult units on the property. Uh, at the last meeting, the Board of Selectmen generally came to consensus that we thought 170 units was probably too many for the town. At least at this time, we did not see that um, passing. And I want to remind everyone who's here and who might be watching that in order for this town to sell property, the question is put to the voters and residents of the town, and they will ultimately make the decision. So it was the feeling of the Board of Selectmen that 170 units uh, would not pass the town at this time. The, um, the two concepts that I think attracted the most interest were options C and E, and those are the ones I asked that Greg and Jack focus on um, for, for your questions. C uh, is the proposal to build 51 homes on the property using the current one and a half acre zoning. Toll is proposing to pay three and a half million dollars under that proposal and projects that the town would receive estimated taxes of $950,000 annually uh, once completed. Before describing E, I think we should start with C. If you can go to that, Betsy. And um, if you'd like to describe it, tell us more detail about it, and we'll open that one up for questions. Sure. Thank you for having us here. My name is Jack Lamb, and I'm the division president for Toll Brothers in Connecticut. And with me um, is Greg Kamadolsky, also from Toll Brothers. He's our group president for New England. Um, so proposal C, which is up on the screen behind you, um, was our attempt at providing a layout and a scenario that meets the current zoning um, of 51 what we call estate homes on large lots similar to the, the homes in the neighborhood. They would be priced in the six to $700,000 range. Um, we anticipate selling 12 to 14 of them a year, so it would take 
three to four years to sell out. Um, this would be a scenario that would be a traditional subdivision. It would be public roads. You would own your own lot. Um, there would be no age restriction. Um, How big are the lots, Jack? The lots, it's 1.5 acres only. Um, there would be no golf possible with this scenario. Neither 18 nor 9 lots would fit. And we're not proposing to build anything in the current amenity area, so the area of the existing parking lot, clubhouse, pool, and tennis courts. It would be essentially untouched and not part of the proposal. So you would not propose to, to purchase that parcel? The, uh, the, the section of the parcel that has the clubhouse? We would not. Okay. okay. Any questions? Yes, yeah, so I'm having trouble um, picturing where that, I can't follow the map. Because if that's the entire, that's not the entire 155 acres. Is it? Yes. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Woodfield. Oh, I see it now. I see it. Okay, on the bottom then is where, the, I got it. I'm sorry. Yep, I see Do it. you have a pointer, Betsy? Oh, that's a little I was yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So with this plan, I just want to make sure the numbers. Ninety-two acres is what you're proposing to buy and develop. Sixty-three acres retained by the town, which includes where the pool club is, the tennis courts, and the building. And you cannot touch the building because that area is not something you're purchasing. Correct. And across the street there would also so the town would retain that. Let's call it the large V where Woodfield Road meets with the Ancillary Road? <coughs> yes. All that. And the only question I have is on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, the property that's left in dark green, is that area you're not purchasing or just area you're not developing? We're not developing it. We're open to however the town wants to handle it. If the town wants to retain it as open space, that would be fine. Um, we could also create a homeowners association with a conservation easement if the town did not want to retain that. But no matter what, it would, it would be undeveloped. But it's part of your purchase of the property. We would be happy to purchase it. We would be happy for okay. you to keep it. The so purchase price would not change. Okay. It, 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 if I might interject, it might be easier in terms of subdivision purposes if we purchase the entirety of the golf course property and just develop parts of it and kept the other parts not developed by easement as opposed to trying to right. subdivide, you know, certain areas where we're developing out, so subdivided out from other areas. And I, think, I think it would be cleaner that way and easier. But the price would be the same, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, my question is, and I think I, I want to direct this to the, um, to the town treasurer. Uh, when you when you open a subdivision like this, let, let's say 51 homes, give or take 51 homes, um, it's not age restricted. So clearly, we will have we are possible to have families that will have children. And I want to know how, in the long run, now you know this is going to this development does not happen overnight. So it's it's going to be built over time. But in the long run. How much does it cost the town compared to the taxes that we're estimated to get? Uh, I mean, how, how much is the town going to be spending? I am, because of my experience in conservation, I've always, it always happens that um, regular subdivisions like this, especially with our zoning and the conditions and the prices, uh, et cetera, um, and in this town, um, it's, it's more than likely that the town will be spending a lot more over time, and a significant amount. Um, you know, uh, according to our records, and I'm just quoting the records, I, I believe that uh, we spend, uh, for one child in the system, it's about $16,000, right? Is that correct? It's probably close, yeah. Yeah, yeah. more or less? Yeah. So, I mean, if you take, Let's just say for 51 houses, maybe 40 of them or 45 of them have, will have children, maybe one or two. So if you do the math, that's a staggering amount over time. Um, of course, you know, 
I mean, that's it's up to you to, to think and maybe to educate me. I am. Um, that's the fear that I have. Maria, I, <coughs> I think that's generally um, accepted that that that's correct. Right. Um, and the, I, as I understand it, I wasn't part of the thinking at the time. One of the reasons the town purchased the property was to um, avoid that kind of development because financially exactly. it does exactly. a lot for the town. Exactly. However, um, Toll was uh, it was came from a request from certain selectmen that Toll look at it, and that's why it's before us. Fine, but I just that's mm -hmm. just what I want to put out there. Yeah. Right. Um, um, if I could just go, I'm sorry. Did you want to continue? No. I mean, I, I just, you know, if you come out, if you do the math in those figures, they're staggering. Right. Absolutely. And, and I don't know if I, you I'd like to see the math before I am determined that they were staggering and they were uh, negative to the town. I, I think it's inappropriate for us to generally and anecdotally say that. We should, we should have that as part of this. Uh, That's part of what we need to do, as right. our due diligence to do that math. Yep. Cool. Yep. All right, no problem. Because there's going to be, there could be no kids, there could be years after the kids go and you're getting the taxes. So it's, it's I think it's easy to say this and, and everyone to, to think that, but for us to make decisions, right. we should have those Chances are so many people who can afford $60,000, $700,000 may have kids in private school, <coughs> but still. They might. That's why we should have the math instead of just saying it. But, but, yeah. uh, but uh, in general, I mean, it is a proven years and years of, of development throughout the country that we have to watch out for these things. Yes. I have a design question. I, I, can I just clarify? Yeah. I just want to go, go back, just go so the record's clear. Greg, when you said it's easier and cleaner, we would just buy the whole thing and some of it would have easement, you know, uh, conservation easements. I assume you were not including in that the pool and clubhouse and tennis courts. Correct. Right. Okay. I just want that to be clear on the record. Okay. Sorry, Sandy. No, that's okay. So there's a road mm -hmm. of funds that's along Ansonia Road that they um, uh, abut um, homes that are on one of the new roads, Road A. What's the access for those homes? Is it on, from Ansonia? That's correct. It'll be from Ansonia. Okay. By the way, just to clarify, this is a, a very rudimentary uh -huh. planning study. It's okay. not been engineered. It's, sure. No, no, I understand. You know, it, can, it, it it's conceptual in nature. Let's okay. put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, are there any other questions? And I think, oh, I told you. Yeah, I just want to clear <coughs> in this plan. There's no movement of the cell tower. Correct. Therefore, and, and that, that area there that you've left is basically what we would consider the rocky area or the hill there, which is maybe uh, a rock formation, if you want to call it, that at one point, in the, <coughs> a few years ago, when Toll Brothers came, and I believe you were here, that was actually the area that was looked to develop, and there would have been a lot of blasting involved, I remember, at that time. So that area is being avoided this time. That's not part of your... Correct. And that's considered. Thank you. I think I think you also mentioned, Greg, that this is what you'd call a traditional subdivision, where it would be town roads, town responsibility for infrastructure Correct. and roads, etc. Just as in any other town development. Okay. Um, well, uh, besides, besides the school, I think there's also uh, there's a cost. I mean, there's a estimated cost for services for each individual for an adult, and I think that's about two thousand dollars a person. Yeah, and, and that would include probably your expenses that you're talking about now. Yeah, we can look at that. I, I, um, I Is that correct, Tony? Just, well, if you, and if you, according to the report we received from Will and McBroom, it was like 1925. All right. So it's pretty close. Pretty close. Right. Yeah. The, the point of this conceptual <coughs> plan is, I think one of the major points is, there would be really no modification necessary that we think of to the existing current zoning regulations in the town of Woodbridge. That's, That's really a major component of the thinking mm -hmm. that went into this. So I just want to bring that out. No, that's very clear. Anything else? Okay, then <clears throat> why don't we take a look at um, option E. 
Option E is um, <coughs> quite different. It's active adult, that's over 55 housing. Um, it's a cluster model where the houses are closer together than would be allowed in traditional zoning. But it is um, a number that Toll has estimated would be permitted under traditional zoning. I'm not sure it's exactly the right number, but in other words, instead of having 69 houses spread over the entire parcel, they would be uh, cluster development, which I think is considered uh, much more advantageous for conservation purposes and open space purposes, as we can see. Um, Toll is proposing to pay a little over $3 million for this and estimates annual taxes of $900,000 when completed. Um, would you like to give sure. us more detail, please? So this plan, um, I believe the genesis of this plan, the thinking mm -hmm. behind this plan was if the town were to create and adopt a z cluster housing zone that kept the allowable density of the underlying zone, what, what could we build? So no more units than would be allowed under the existing zone. We just looked at a plan with 51 homes. Mm -hmm. We believe on that same plan, you could fit an additional 18 homes. We weren't proposing to build them, but we believe an additional 18 homes could be built on that plan. So we got a density of 69, and that's how we came up with this plan, which would be a, a cluster open space layout. <coughs> it would be age restricted. So there'd be no school aged children living in this community. We believe we could sell approximately 18 a, year, 18 a year, so it would also be four years to sell and build out. Um, this would have a clubhouse and pool. The homes would be um, the same price and square footage as the detached component of our original 170 unit proposal, but none of the attached. So they're 1,800 to 2,500 square feet, and they would sell in the 400 and $500,000 range. Um, this also um, <coughs> preserves a lot more open space than the, the plan we just looked at. Um, and most importantly, in, in my eyes, it serves the need for the age-restricted housing in town. The roads would be private. Private and so maintained by, maintained the, association by the association. No, it would not be town cost. Correct. Um, I just want to clarify something. When you said with clubhouse and pool, um, I think what you mean is that you would build a clubhouse and pool for the homeowners association, but Correct. the current uh, facilities would still remain with the town. Correct. As well as um, 120 acres of open space. Okay. Yes, this would preserve 119 mm -hmm. acres of land, um, presumably to stay with the town. Okay, so you are building 69 units in 36 acres? You're buying only 36 acres, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, well, <coughs> I'm not sure that you can really call that, I don't consider that a good um, development situation with cluster homes. I think that, because you know, the town still owns most of the space, correct? All right, well, although it'd be open space, but I think it makes more, it, it becomes more significant if you're buying the whole property, cluster the homes, all right, so we do have the open space, but you're paying the taxes, so we get income from it. That, to me, is a doable version of this thing. Can but you move to where you live? I mean, <laughs> I mean why would they want to do that? Why would they want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> but no, also, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, it's confusing, <coughs> because 69 homes in 36 acres, all right? Um, the town is still responsible for the, all the all the other spaces, right? Because it, you're only buying 36 homes. But I said 36 acres, right? Yeah, right. It sounds to me that 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 sh I don't know how that works. I would I would prefer you buy the whole property with the 69 acres and 36, but but you pay the taxes for all that property. Well, in other towns we <laughs> develop properties in, um, generally the zoning regs say that the Planning Zoning Commission and the Board of Selectmen can choose what happens to the open space. Either it's retained by the Homeowners Association or it's given or it's deeded over to the town. Um, but either way, the open space would have very little value from a tax revenue standpoint. The value of the homes is still the value of the homes. Mm -hmm. So if you can't sell it, 
it doesn't have a tremendous amount of value to tax. No. It's next to nothing. Next to nothing. Yeah, they don't have anything. <laughs> so, Maria, I find that I, I had looked at it just the opposite yeah. that it would be preferable because it wouldn't have much taxable value that it would be preferable for the town to retain ownership so that yeah. we could decide what to do what with to do it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, this development, this is a typical age restricted development, right? Now, it sounds like <coughs> very, typical, awful lot very typical. typical. Yeah, the ones we visited in different places. I'm sure in, in uh, Orange that the one they have, the word cluster housing, I you know, it's, it's kind of, doesn't sound, but it's basically, that's a typical unit right there, right? Correct. They're going to be six to <coughs> nine of those. They're it's a single family. Right, they're not going to be on top of each other and two stories. That's going to be, they're going to be 69 of those. Yes. Right. Which is, and, and by age restricted, if a, if a couple 55 or over buys in there, everything is pretty much on the first floor they, they need. And then upstairs is another bedroom, a loft, another bathroom. If they have guests. Absolutely the, correct. The, the homes are designed with a master bedroom suite on the first floor of all of them. Right. right. Well, and what did you say the price range was for these? Um, the 400s and 500s. Have you done this type of development in other Connecticut towns? Um, not really. We've done it in lots of other places, but not in Connecticut. And because in other towns you've done town townhouses. Is We've that typically right? done as opposed to attached homes in our age restricted communities in Connecticut. Um, but we got the sense that attached homes um, might not be as warmly received here. That I'm confused about. You say that you know, you're sticking to the 1.5 acre zoning, but you're only building in 36. Not for this. Well, it says right here on the scene. Detached cluster homes. No, for purposes of calculating the density. density. Oh, the density. All right, right. I see what you mean. Because it seems to me that that's five. That's less than 1.5 acres. Right. right. We last time we were here, we we interpreted some of the concerns that the town was worried about setting a precedent about increasing the density over what's allowed now. Right. So we said, okay, let's take a look at an open space layout that mm -hmm. preserves as much space as possible but maintains that underlying density. Mm, Could you talk about your option to um, include the mental golf course and um, the clubhouse? Sure. So, in various proposals that we've submitted to the town over the last year and a half, and perhaps even in various presentations, there were some slight modifications to what's written here. So, so let me clarify exactly what's here, which is where we've landed. We've determined that if we buy options A, B, or, or E from the town, and we develop them, we are willing to change the layout of nine of the holes such that it would be a working nine hole golf course at our expense because we believe the premiums we could get from buyers of purchasing on a, on a course would offset and just about be equal to the cost to do that. So we're willing to do that at no cost provided the town wants that. If we do not do the nine hole golf course option, we would ask that the town put a conservation easement on the land because we don't want it to be developed, that would that would hurt the the value of our purchasers' homes. So so for nine holes, um, we can do that at no cost. The, the one million dollar reduction that's referenced at the bottom of, of the original slide that was up, um, we believe that is the cost to demolish the existing clubhouse in its entirety to rehabilitate the pool, to resurface the parking lots, and to build a small bathhouse to serve the pool. Um, and we would stand by that million dollar price. Um, if it's slightly more, that's that's on us. So just to clarify. That's, a big, that's an important detail. Just to clarify then, you're suggesting if you leave the nine hole golf course it'll help you sell your homes. But you want nothing to do with the nine-hole golf course as far as running it, maintaining it, owning it. You don't want a golf course. So we would then maintain, run, and operate the golf course if we can't find somebody to operate a nine-hole golf course, which is difficult. 
Uh, and as far as the building, you'll take a million dollars off of your purchase price, which on that option I believe was about three million. <coughs> so you give us two million and change, but you would demolish the building and finish the pool area and the parking lots. Correct. But you would also not own that property or maintain it. You just do that for us as basically a construction job, and we would pay you a million dollars. You guaranteed that that construction would be done, and you'd leave it behind. Correct. Um, I know in the first proposal, we don't have as many details for the others, but we had talked about um, payment of the full purchase price at the time of closing. Does that pertain to all of these options? All of these scenarios would be cash at closing. Cash at closing. Which, uh, and closing is contingent upon us getting all the approvals necessary to build whatever, whatever the proposal is. But payment to the town would not be contingent upon your building or selling any units. No. It no. would be at the time of no, closing. It's contingent upon receiving all the necessary regulatory approvals. Right. Uh, okay. What type of um, heating do you envision for this? I'm sorry? What type of heating? Gas or propane or oil or? Our current. I, I believe all of our proposals have bringing gas to the site, so it would be gas heat. Yeah, and gas. Which would benefit anyone living along that the route that the gas would take. Because they have options to tie in. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes. Are there any other uh, sort of environmentally friendly amenities that you foresee including or would include solar or other um, we've been asked system. earlier if we if yeah. we would be willing to offer solar options and so on and so forth and we're very open to to any environmentally friendly options um, we could put together packages to the buyers absolutely I don't know if this is a question for toll brothers or for Jerry or for whatever but there's been a lot of discussion and, and people are of the opinion <coughs> that if this were to be approved and somehow the zoning were to be uh, change to allow this that Susan Jacobs who has I'm just using her as an example has <laughs> six acres uh, wherever she lives I don't even know where she lives uh, decides she wants to put some cluster housing on her lot uh, it's wide open now because you've changed your what what, what how do you how do you accomplish this without opening <coughs> the whole town up to this type of development well, yeah. I, I know Toll Brothers has done these discussions <coughs> before, and I, I did talk to them about that, and their experience is that it has not resulted in other similar projects in other areas of town. I myself have talked to a zoning uh, expert, Connecticut zoning expert, a lawyer, who has done these kind of <coughs> projects, and his opinion, although it's informal over the phone, three or four discussions, and he's willing to give us a formal legal opinion, being an expert and having done this before, and having experience in other towns is that a zone can be carefully crafted to be limited to the facts and circumstances of this parcel and it is very unlikely very remote that it could be duplicated in other areas of towns that's the legal opinion from a recognized zoning legal person in our community and I think uh, told that's correct I mean you can well, let's start with the fact that with this proposed development, you'd have to, the town of Woodbridge would have to create a zone. Right. That's not in the regulations right now. But having said that, a zone could be created, a language could be crafted that pretty much targets this particular property. So the zone could say, this zone is allowed in properties of a certain size, 50 acres, 80 acres, you know, I'm making it up. And it needs to front on a state road. And you, there's a lot, of, a lot of criteria by which the zone can be written around to, to allow it to only be applied to this one particular property. And, that, and there's precedent for that. In throughout, Connecticut throughout, and Massachusetts. Throughout the state, and, and those kinds of zones that are carefully crafted withstand legal challenges. Uh, this expert that I've talked to said that it is something that he's willing to give us an opinion on. He's willing to come and speak 
to the uh, Board of Selectmen and explain his experience and his understanding of the law. That is the law. It is not spot zoning. And I've asked him over and over, it is not spot zoning. And he can explain, he and other legal zoning scholars and experts can explain why it is not spot zoning. And I think that those questions have to, you have to be satisfied and the townspeople have to be satisfied that that opinion, those kind of opinions are significant and we can rely on those opinions. Well, until we get it, I don't think we can rely on it. No, you can as, right as of right now, we don't have that. And I would just query, what about the property right across the street there, Oak Lane? Yes. Oak Lane. They're, they're the first ones to come to the podium. Then. I'm They're not very interested. Oak, Lane, Oak but Lane doesn't have yes. sewers. That's the one big distinction, and that's one thing that would be critical in the crafted zone at the Woodbridge Country Club. There are just yes, you have to make sure that there are enough distinctions that's that are specific to this zone that can't be duplicated in other areas of town of, of towns. And that can be done. And yes, we don't have the opinion yet. So this is my my representation of what I was told and you need to have the opinion and I think it's very important to have the opinion. And to make sure the opinion is iron clear because no one would want it to be duplicated in other in other areas of town. Particularly not it's, Susan's house. It's important to point out the, the fact that <coughs> this theoretical zone zone overlay we're discussing would require the land to meet the underlying density of the zone. So you have to ask yourself, why would a developer want to, want to build a cluster housing economically, a cluster housing community with smaller lots? Why would they want to if they're not getting any additional density? What's the benefit? We're doing it because the town has asked us to look at it. Well, but we have other lots of, there's other yeah. parcels of similar yeah. size. Right. We're out there now. Oakland. Yeah. Uh, and I said Oak Lane has to be city water either, right? No, well, that, that's not what he just said, yeah. though. He, he, he was yeah. talking about the line. Would it be be possible to restrict it to, first of all, how many parcels of this size are there? There's not many. Other than that. Oak Lane. And yeah. could you restrict it to the, the necessity of having city water and sewers? Yes. Absolutely. I remember Jim Perito saying that the first time around. But you can't bring those things. Even they will extend certain lines probably for this project and, and, and have to maybe even adjust the size of the water pipes. Or, but it, but you can't we get to a point where it's prohibitive. You, you guys my have questions are about, it. It Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And that is a, so my questions are more about this uh, actual proposal. So on this proposal, I just want to also clarify uh, I'm looking at E still. It's 55 and up, correct? I don't actually see that on, I'm sure that's what it's meant to be. It says adapt to the door. Yeah, okay, fine. Right. So 55 and up. So Susan, you can't have one of these houses anyways. And um, other than that, tell me how that works exactly. We've heard it a few times preliminary that for the most part, it's, it's fairly easy to keep that requirement but that's once in a while there's an exception to a home when someone passes away and leaves it. How does that work exactly? So the way the federal fair housing laws are written, you cannot discriminate based on many things including age. And there's only two exceptions to that age restriction. If at least 80% of the homes are age restricted such that they're occupied by people 55 and older, or at least 80% of the homes are occupied such that they're occupied they're occupied by people 62 and over. So generally there's a 20% exemption to allow for a spouse that passes away and a younger spouse continues to live there, so on and so forth. But the important thing is that no children under 18 would be allowed to live there under any circumstances. So there would be no school aged children whatsoever under any of these exceptions I'm talking about, the 20% exception. I think you're, Tony, I think your question also was how how does anyone how does the town has the homeowners association guard against how do we you know the, somebody usurping the law here so to speak and the answer is there are a variety of ways different towns handle it what I'm most used to is that the homeowners association has to do a or does a certification of every home, every occupant of every home annually or once every two years 
and those certifications are submitted to the town zoning enforcement officer for his review and the certification basically <coughs> is certifying that at least one of the occupants in the home is 55 or older would you know maybe sometimes they even ask for some proof of that um, you know that we have this nuance with the exception but but the the general thrust of it is there's a certification done that's submitted to the town zoning off uh, enforcement officer it's it's done periodically and the zoning enforcement officer reviews it to make sure that you know what's what was purported is actually happening so we self police but it's self police but reviewed by the town Oh, I'm sorry, I have one more. <coughs> Just to Maria's point earlier, because I, I think I've had this conversation with you before and with Lorna McBroom. Just because we build 69 adult, active adult housing areas doesn't mean we're not adding children to the town. Obviously, a certain percentage of the people who are going to buy these, and one of the purposes for building an adult community in town is that people would have a place from town to move to a smaller to downsize. And I think you said last time, or maybe it was Mel McBroom, so I don't want to quote you. Someone's told us that about a third of these units would be predicted to come from town. So roughly 20 of these 23 would be coming from houses within town. Downsizing. And certainly those people who are downsizing, the people who might go into their houses are upsizing, are more likely to be families. So you're not getting away without any children. It's not a difference of 69 or zero as far as the 51 Exactly. I'm just trying to say is that your absolutely numbers? correct. Okay. So that's your numbers. Roughly about so we should expect about a third of these to come from Woodbridge residents over time. Yes. Uh, but you know, it's it, it's all empirical data. I mean we're saying a third of these will be sold to re Woodbridge residents. Uh, yeah, maybe forty percent of the um will each one of those Woodbridge residents that's selling their current residence sell to a family with children some, some. i don't know if it's everyone Most but likely. yeah there's yeah. certainly yeah. going to be some yeah. families with children yeah. buying yeah. 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 But, but Tony, i would also argue that those people are going to move anyway exactly. and well, the point is so you want to try to keep you know our town residents in town well, so there's a trade-off right we don't know whether, when they'll move whether this would move people quicker because they have an option in woodbridge and some people stay in their homes until they're not comfortable but the fact of the matter is you're adding to the inventory of the town therefore you are adding more children regardless once you do development not just to as anybody does any development whether it's active living or very active you're still adding some children so it's hard to do the numbers exactly and say which one adds more to the town but we also have an issue in this town i believe in long to us we're the second oldest town in the state of connecticut average age so at one point we are going to have a turnover and we have had our school system go down from over a thousand in beecher to somewhere in the high 700 so and yet there is some the addition of active adult housing our percentage in amity has gone up right, right. so up it's, it's, it's a down. question of, of equilibrium right. i mean some years it's going to ebb high some years it's going to ebb low right. yeah. at the end of the day whether you have active adult housing it seems to me or not you're always looking for some sort of stasis and this adds an element to how that stasis is achieved and I, I mean, agree that's my point would be yeah, we have some room yeah. in our school system only because just less than 10 years ago we had a, over a thousand kids in the beecher system and now we're 70 so it's gonna so we do have some room i don't want to make it sound like we can't take in any families or or any adults okay thank you can i ask a construction question you mentioned um your projection is to sell 18 units <coughs> per year do you build the units first and then sell them? Is it how do, how does that work? We generally do not build on spec. We we build a, a decorated model home with a sales office. People come in and choose the location and the floor plan they want, and we build on contract. We're not spec builders. Yeah. That's 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 our company motto, really. Okay. That you know, yeah, we'll build a model. We might build one spec home, uh -huh. but really our, our credo is we build on contract and not before we really believe in that okay. so so it would be over a period of let's say five plus years that you would be building on that site depends on how fast we sell no i understand we sell faster, faster we'll you'll build, build faster, faster. If we sell slower okay we'll sell uh, build slower okay Sorry. 
does that <coughs> excuse me does that mean they'll be unsightly building materials and <laughs> trucks and things there how, how do you deal with that over the period of time well we won't it, we have to look at how the site would get graded and how what earth has to be moved where to balance the grading but generally we don't like to open up the entirety of the site at once for construction now I say that but still you know if we've got to take dirt from this part to move it here because it needs dirt here and we're starting our homes here so this may get opened up but if we don't have to do it we won't do it so we like to if we can contain the construction in definitive sections as we're moving along the development path if, if we can accomplish that because we don't you know it's just it quite frankly it's more money for us if we're opening everything up and it's unsightly as you say and you know there there are soil and erosion control issues that require more intensive management as more of it gets opened up. So we try and contain it as much as we can. Can I follow up on that? Yes. So from an infrastructure <coughs> point of view, you, you, I would, I'm telling me if I'm wrong, I would assume that you do the infrastructure piece, like the water and the roads, all at once. No. You do that? Lot by lot as well. Are Not lot by lot, but, but, but you know, 20 sections, uh, 20 units at a time. Oh, so that's we'll, 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 we'll have to figure out what huh. makes sense in terms of sectionali sectionalizing it. Right. But, you know, we'll definitely do it. We don't want our infrastructure to get too far out of our sales. Gotcha. So, so my real question was, actually, and I have a vague <laughs> recollection that this came up <clears throat> two or three cycles ago, when I read this one. How does your project affect or um, integrate local work, local companies and or local realtors? Well, let me do the realtors first. Okay. We absolutely love realtors, and we <laughs> and maybe some of the room don't, but we absolutely will we work with them. We work with them very closely. Now, our sales staff in the sales office in the model are Toll Brothers employees. Uh -huh. They work directly for us. But we absolutely co-broke with local realtors, local brokers. We have a multitude of programs that we work with them on to, to encourage them to bring customers to us to compensate them. So we, we, work, we try and work very closely with them, and we do. Uh, in terms of subcontracting um, the vast majority of our subcontracting forces subcontractor forces are from the state of Connecticut it's very rare very somewhat unusual to have a subcontractor work for us in Connecticut that's out of state I'm not saying it doesn't happen but it's it's somewhat rare so um, so state of Connecticut <coughs> trades and we subcontract every trade so in effect we act as our own general contractor and we subcontract with every trade that's going to build the house so every trade. Okay. the vast majority of those trades are from Connecticut from the from the New Haven Woodbridge area I mean we certainly Rick's Plumbing, is he from New York? We, we have lots of local trades, and we generally try and contract trades whenever possible in the immediate area. Yeah, because if they get the best pricing, they're traveling the least distance. Right. Gotcha. The less they have to travel, the better <coughs> price they'll give us. So. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, I have a question. Could you talk a little bit about the access? Because it's different from my, just from Ansonia Road. Is that where it's going to be? And is there some kind of how is is that going to impact traffic and is that the only way in and out or do you need another way to get out because what if there's a tree blocking i know that happened in my neighborhood and sure but uh, are okay. we talking about on option e yeah option e okay. i'm sorry so yeah. on option I, can't, e, I can't tell from this or that we show the main entrance which is a boulevard entrance <coughs> um, coming off of ansonia road it's up at the top um, right up at the top exactly where the i don't know who has the pointer but 
Um, and there's a, a gated emergency access off of Johnson Road. So that would be a locked gate with what's called the Knox box okay. that only the fire department and the police department have keys to. And no residents can use that gate. That's emergency access only. No cars will, will travel on that, that access way. And is this at an intersection at any point on Ansoni, or I just can't tell from no. This is like not at an intersection. No. Um, so it's where, roughly? It maybe? looks like it's approximately. Two thirds of the way. Um, yeah. Here's the V. Maybe 500 feet north of that intersection with. Is it Rimmon? Yeah, Rimmon is the V here. The V, yes. Yeah. If you can see it in white. Yeah, right. Okay, got it. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, 500 feet west. Yes. Yeah, you can't access right at that intersection because of the way that it's already a crazy little yeah. right triple. Okay. I don't think the, t the topography would allow it. It's right. pretty steep right That's there. I think there's already a unit uh, house there too, right to the right. So this is somewhere in between. Okay. And does that look like a double access? Yes, it's a boulevard access just okay. to enhance the streetscape, a planted medium. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could you talk a little bit about if you did actually develop the nine hole golf course and did some of the other work on the other property? Would that be phased? Um, is that done all at once? Is it done at the same time that you start building? How do you envision that? Uh, to be candid, I'm, I'm not sure we've thought that through. Okay. First of all, you use the words develop a nine hole course. And what we would do is modify the mm -hmm. existing course to make it a nine hole. Right. That, so just to clear that up, sorry. would we do it all at once? Um, we'd, as Jack said, we'd have to study it a little more. When we were here a year ago or a year and a half ago, I can't mm -hmm. keep track, we proposed a nine-hole course mm -hmm. or redeveloping mm -hmm. the golf course to have a nine-hole course. And I think we were able to accomplish that by only having to modify like three holes. Uh -huh. There would be two new holes yeah. and I believe one or two would change direction so we'd have to do a new green. But the majority of the course, uh, the majority of the nine holes, I think s five or six of the nine holes would be unchanged. Mm -hmm. Now it would require some work to the irrigation and car paths, which yes. we would do, but the hole as you know it now would essentially be unchanged. And I guess I'm asking from a timing perspective in terms of is this land out of commission um, for what period of time um, as a golf course? I think we'd have to get back to you on that. I, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't think it would take. Would it be out the whole season? I, I don't think so. But we, we could study that and mm -hmm. get back to you. We could talk to some contractors and figure that out. Okay. So Tony wants to pretend that I wouldn't qualify to buy one of these houses. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as we're pretending, let's you. <laughs> so let's pretend that I live on either Woodfield or Johnson Road. Okay, tell me why. Tell me how this will impact what I see now. Sure. Or how or how I live my life on those two roads. On Woodfield Road, there will be very little impact um, to because, the residents. Because? Because we're not adding any cars to that road. We're not building in the vicinity of that road. I would say the, the closest home is uh, maybe 800, I understand. 800, I want you to say. Maybe 800 feet, 700 feet away, but okay. it is also over a large hill. I don't believe... I'd have to double check this. I would be surprised if any of the homes we're proposing to build could be seen from Woodfield Road. Okay. On Johnson Road, um, there is some planting there now. There is some, um, I think, openings in the um, under canopy, maybe in the vicinity of where that halfway house is or used to be. Um, halfway house? I miss that zoning change. Okay, yeah, go ahead. There's a, what used to be a little snack bar. So right, okay. Yeah. Um, and we would certainly plant more trees 
to screen the view of what we're building from Johnson Road. Is it, is the topography, if I'm on Johnson Road, is the topography even? Is there a hill? Is it, I, I just don't remember. I mean, I've probably driven it a thousand times, but as best as you can tell me now, and maybe you don't know. Looking east, it goes. Well, I, I'm asking the gentleman up here. I'm, I'm unsure. Okay. We'll get back to you on that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's, there's folks in the room that may be interested in the same explanation from Ansonia Road. Mm -hmm. Did I not say answer? I meant to say Ansonia Road as well. No, I think you said, but. Woodfield right. and Johnson. Woodfield and Johnson. Oh, yeah. Just so the Ansonia. Throw Ansonia in there too. Thanks. The same answer as Johnson. There's plenty of plantings. There's an entire hole um, that's acting as a buffer, but we would plant additional screening to block the view, to help block the view. And I don't know what a boulevard entrance is. Just means there's a planted median. It's got a median. So the two lane, there's a lane with a median, an in and out gotcha. lane, Thank instead you. of just one driveway. Thank you. It has a median, planted landscape median. Thank you. Well, while you're on um, Ansonia Road, what about the impact on traffic? I know you talked about where it would be. What do you think about impact on traffic, particularly at busy times of day? For residential developments of this size. Um, it's rare for there to be um, a significant impact. We have not studied the traffic, but if we proceed, that would certainly be something that the town would require us to do, and planning and zoning would have us do a full tra independent traffic study. Maybe traffic study from mm -hmm. a traffic okay. engineer to answer that your, question. Your project and prospect. Okay. And one of my Woodbridge friends moved there, and so I've seen the units. It's a nice unit. But how many units are developed there right now? Do you know offhand? I'm just thinking that it's, it's a uh, quite it's, a few. Uh, it's about, it's going to be 366 in total. 366. Over maybe uh, 210, 220. I'm currently sold. Built. Yeah. Cause the reason I ask is yes. I passed that a lot on Scott Road now. Is that the only way in and out of there, Scott Road? Correct. It? But there's two, en there's two, en there's two entrances to the development from Scott Road. There's the main one, which has the boulevard entrance yeah, exactly. with the with the guardhouse and the gates and everything. If you go a little further down Scott towards I-84, right. there's a set, there'll be a second entrance. Okay. Won't be gated or anything. So there'll absolutely be two ways in and out. The reason I ask is obviously that's a lot more units than you're proposing here. Correct. I pass by there in the morning. I pass by there in the evening. I don't have ever seen a car driving around the place. It's uh, again, it's it's a 55 and over unit uh, uh, development. But as far as driving by there and say, oh my, and I, and I obviously knowing what, what I know, I take notice of it and I look in there. Does anybody ever drive around here? I've never seen cars. So as far as traffic, and that's how many units? About 200. It's over 200. Bill. Triple, yeah. triple over. So I, honestly, I mean, traffic-wise, I don't think yeah. they just don't generate a lot of cars. Which is, units. you know, if we go further. In the process, we would have a traffic have engineer have a absolutely yeah. analyze that for you. Yeah. Anything else? Um, <clears throat> you've built several things, projects in Connecticut and all that kind of stuff, and from time to time I've heard that there are problems or there are legal stuff against Toll Brothers. Could you name them? Sure. What, when and you what? say legal stuff, what I does mean, that mean? I uh, mean, like lawsuits, cases. Well, I, I and I think I said this the last time we all met, I, I started this division back in 1992. So I have the whole history from day one. That's good. Uh, we've completed in that time over 50 communities. We've delivered over 2,000 homes. Um, we uh, and I'm just doing this off the top of my head, um, so I, I'm going to put a caveat in there. I would say the number of lawsuits that have been in place in that time is a handful. 
what would they be about? Um, well, that we just had an interesting case in um, in the town of Stonington, and we actually brought an appeal against the town of Stonington ourselves. And the short, the real short, because I could go on for two hours, is a very fascinating situation. Right. We bought an approved subdivision from a developer, fully approved, and we started building the subdivision. We, we closed on it, we paid cash, we started building it, and um, uh, about four months after we started building the subdivision, the town engineer came to us and said, we've got a problem. And he said, what's the problem? And he said, the consultant that did the engineering report for the <coughs> developer who bought the property from made a mistake. And I'm going to have to not issue, allow the issuance of building permits for half the subdivision. Mm. And for two and a half years, so we paid cash for this. We thought it was fully approved. Four months after we closed and paid our money, the town engineer comes to us and says, got a problem. What kind of subdivision is it? Is it close a, a to like conventional, this? traditional subdivision, the, one acre lots. Within the zoning density. Yeah, yeah, but it was fully approved. Mm. So, and we did our due diligence before we closed. <coughs> This was never told to us by the town engineer or, or anybody. Great. And I think, uh, well, I think if I can interrupt, I think what Maria is talking about legally is well, how many lawsuits out of the 2,000 homes you developed had to do with bad quality people, houses falling down, imperfections. Well, I don't think we've ever had a house fall down. No, I'm just <laughs> exaggerating. <laughs> we, that's good. We, <laughs> that's good. I think we, we we have one lawsuit against us currently in Danbury. In, in terms of homeowners suing us, yeah. I think this one association has brought a claim. Um, and other than that, in Connecticut, I can't. I don't. I can't think of any. That's good to know. This one association brought a claim, and we're trying to work through it. Um, and it deals with this phenomenon. It's not a phenomenon, but it's it's a thing called ice damming and leakage from ice damming. And uh, unfortunately, these residents have had some leakage from ice damming. They're 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 claiming that it's your fault. It's our fault. Mm -hmm. We're saying it's look. It's an act of God. The insurance companies even have insurance for this so we're working through it and, and we're hoping to we resolve it work it out so that that's in place right now but other than that I, I can't really think of that's good anything to do you still offer a one-year guarantee anymore? I know last time you were here you that. no we offer a 10-year warranty ten year. there's no guarantees in life but there's a 10-year <laughs> warranty and um, the warranty is, is what I call a step-up program, so there are certain lives in that, there's certain periods of time in that 10-year warranty period where certain things in the home are covered by warranty. And every homeowner that closes with us gets that warranty. And for the 10 years of the period of time for the warranty, the, the structure itself is totally warranted. But things like me the mechanical systems, those are warranted for five years, and certain other things are warranted for two years. But the structure itself is warranted okay. for 10 years. And I, quite frankly, don't know of any other builder in Connecticut that offers a 10-year warranty. Now, the state requires a one-year warranty. Right. So we all... Every builder has to mm -hmm. do that, but I we go beyond that and offer a ten year warranty, which I think is is somewhat unique. Anything else? Can I ask one last question? <coughs> Just for sure. those of town residents who may be here or watching and, and, and may not know, can you tell us very quickly the size of your company, the kind of insurance you carry, and the amount of houses you build in this country? Well, 
You're not a small operation, is my point. No. The, the, the amount of insurance, I can't, I, I don't know if I can answer that one. But we're, we're a uh, publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, this fiscal year, I think we're going to have around $5 billion in revenues. I think I got that right. Uh, we, I think, have tremendous financial wherewithal. We just, mm, two years <coughs> ago, bought a home building company mm. in California and paid $1.4 billion. Not million, but billion for that company in California. And that was cash. So, I'm giving you those numbers as sort of a sense of the order of magnitude of our wherewithal. Um, Thank you. We, we, you know, everybody is invited to look at our annual report and, and go online and look at our 10Q, have, have Tony look at it, and I think he, he, can, he can vouch for us. Thank you. Of course, you've built in Woodridge before. Mm -hmm. We did. Ten, uh, ten years ago. Anybody sue you? Yeah. Nope, nope. <laughs> Don't give any ideas. I mean, all those houses are on my street, so. They're all right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're behind it. Anything else? No. If not, <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Very thank, you. Helpful. thank you. What's the next step? What can I ask you for? I'll let you know. <laughs> all right. Thanks for having us. Bring your shovels. <laughs> Every stock is out there. Every stock now? Everything is out there. You're a U.S. company. You have a German company. Yeah. Well. What's that? You're also on the Frankfurt Exchange? Is that no. right? No? It's a bad day. It's a New York Times. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, okay. guys. Um, uh, the next item on our agenda are the other scenarios. Maria, you had submitted a document, right. and um, it was kind of late for the last meeting. I said we would bring it up at the next right. one. I mean, I think uh, I gave copies in the time, so you guys should have looked at it already by now. So would you like to walk? I know there are three scenarios here. Um, right. Would you like well, to? Basically, um, let me just give you where I'm coming from. Uh, you know, in, in my campaigning in town, um, the country club issue was always a question that you know people ask me about, and I ask them about what they think. And from the get-go, the town of Woodbridge is a conservation town. I have, I don't feel, from the last time we dealt with this issue, or even now, that they've changed. So I'm coming up with open space scenarios here based on three things, all right? No intensive residential development, no zoning changes that increase residential density, no sale of open land without a conservation restriction. Selling without a conservation restriction will put Woodridge back in the same legal jeopardy that prompted us to buy it in 2009. And, um, you know, I just went over the numbers that we are, we, if you follow the, the, um, the my, my proposals, um, then the options, I talk about what it is now, the, the, the status quo, the net annual cost to Woodridge taxpayers, but in truth and in fact, I think, and, and Tony was the one who gave me this figure, um, since we bought the golf course, there has been about the, the tax pay, each household has been paying about $200, give or take, correct? Which is, you know, in my history of open, buying open space in this town, we've increased, um, you know, when we bought land, there's sometimes it's $40, sometimes the Eldersley was about 200 something dollars when we bought it. Um, this time, we're not, only, we're not only paying for land, we're also running a business. $200 for each household is not really a great amount when you when, because Woodbridge people buy into Woodbridge because of the quality of the atmosphere of the rural you know all this kind of beautiful stuff around us so it's not it, it does that expense does not bog the mind but nonetheless here are the three uh, uh, op open space options um, they 
I should have explained them very well. I'm, I'm asking for your questions, if you have any. One is passive recreation open space. Demolish all buildings and leave us protected open space public park. Number two is open okay, space. Can we just do <coughs> maybe one at a time. So Maria, that first one, right. it seemed to me was very similar to what we had called F on our chart. Is it that about the same thing? It's about the same. Right. Any differences right. that you point out? Uh, uh, not <coughs> really, except, uh, what is it? Hold on a second. Um, that, you know, in 20 years, we will stop. We, we will not be paying anything. The Woodbridge taxpayers will not be, we own the land, creating recreation <coughs> amenity for all townspeople, no development, which is what a lot of our people want to have. Fixed cost for 20 years, then no meaningful additional cost to taxpayers. Right, and I think- It's, 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 it's somewhat similar. Yes. I think it's just about the same. Right. And just like in um, F, when we talked about it last time, it's definitely an option for the town. What we, what we give up are our opportunity costs. Mm -hmm are recouping some of the money we've spent, right. both in, if some of the land is purchased, in revenues, ongoing tax revenues, and right. um, also the whole issue of crowding out other debt and other opportunities. You missed the meeting last night, um, when we, we were our joint meeting last mm -hmm. night, and Matt stressed the um, financial situation of the town at this moment, where we, we're facing, actually Matt, we learned I a little heard, bit more I today. Heard. It's worse every day. Probably a close, somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 million dollars in additional costs in our next fiscal year. So it's just something always to keep in mind. I know, I, I know that, but those are also expenses of a normal town, I mean, uh, or, or, or the normal goings on of our town, that you should be able to, you should have budgeted, looked forward, you know, planned for. Yeah, but I don't think that the 1.2 or whatever no, it is I was budget. budgeted. No. Right. It's extra additional um, educational. Mm -hmm. We just found right. out so about that's it just the last it. couple of days, that's so we couldn't more education. We anticipate special ed kids. Yeah, we could year. not anticipate that at all in our budget. No, that's just, you know, budgets go up. But, but budgets go up and they go down, and, you know, if it's education, that's one of the issues we have with development is education. Okay, so that's right. the first one, which was okay. basically the same as F that we all looked at. Um, okay, and the you second one <coughs> is um, <coughs> the, uh, the private golf course sell entire property to private golf operator including pool and clubhouse using commercial real estate <coughs> agent or similar arrangement with golf consultant place conservation easement on land and no residential development again which is what i find like people and we, we we created these are all very rough figures but we created two scenarios here that are reasonable and uh, not far-fetched so um the <coughs> we've well. had RFPs before, but I don't know. We've never tried to have a, co a, a real commercial real estate agent handle this. Um, and I think there's something to be said about that. I, I wrote an, an article at the town news, um, and the very next day I got a phone call from a very reputable agent, a national one. Um, what's his name? Um, it comes from a company called um, Marcus and Milisha. They were the agents that sold Great River. So they know Connecticut, even if they're functioning from, um, from Florida, I believe, that's their headquarters. They know a lot about golf. This is the person, and, and I <coughs> said to him, I cannot talk to you unless you can sell this property with a conservation <coughs> easement. And he gave me a dossier to prove that they can do that. Um, All right, <coughs> I can read it to you if you want. But well, what is Great River? <coughs> Great River is this uh, golf course in Milford uh -huh. that Sacred Heart University, University just, bought. just bought. Just recently, it's a very, a very recent <coughs> within this year, I believe. <coughs> And they bought it for six million dollars. They buy it. Was it a conservation? Yes. Yes. There's a conservation. It's the apples with the um, country club of Woodbridge. The air clubhouse uh, uh, is just stunning. Well, it is. It's very very wait, 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 wait. Yeah, just I mean, just wait, just wait. One at a time, Karen. Yeah, um, it definitely is not apples to apples. That place. Karen, I'm not <coughs> saying it's apples to apples. No, but we just tried that, Maria. When we at the when we formed the. 
um, was it the yeah. country called a Woodbridge Committee. We did look at all those options. We spent countless hours. The commission looked at this, compared other sales. So the town of Woodbridge, and you could probably look at meeting minutes, has done that. It's very difficult. I appreciate the proposal you're saying, but it's not like it was not explored. And I didn't anybody, say it and explore it. And just saying, came, right now, if somebody came up Maria, to me and gave that to me, and, and Maria no one did, we're not one. I can't finish on that. You'll be that, that. That building, as we all <coughs> observe, is in deplorable shape. Anyone who put a proposal to even run it now did not want to touch <coughs> that building. So it's, it's very difficult. Okay. Well, Maria, do you want to respond to that? And I, I think Susan has a question. Uh, I am. Ju I'm just saying that you know, <coughs> I've got an honest to goodness person who is in the lead in this business to say that they were willing to look at it, and and then they gave me the things that they've done in the past. So, I. I, d I told him straightforward that the town is not going to pursue it unless there is a conservation easement. Our, con our, our town is a conservation town, right? We do not want any residential um, uh, uh, development in this in, in this thing. At least that's how I feel. That's yeah. why I was elected <coughs> to office, I believe. We really want me to remember that all the time. So. Um, so there's these two scenarios. Okay, we're still two. We'll have okay. more questions. I just have a question. We're going back to this Green <coughs> River thing. Yeah, yeah. You said it was sold recently for six million. How many acres? It's the know? same. It's an eighteen golf. Eighteen no, golf. Was it one hundred and fifty five acres? Or I believe it's comparable. <coughs> yeah, in, in okay. size. Yes. Okay. And was there a conservation easement on it? Yes. Like so. Yes. yes. Maria. Yes. <coughs> no. No. There's not. Oh, okay. I don't Sorry. think there was. No, mm -hmm. no because the university wants to be able to expand and build. They're looking. So they're going to use it maybe to develop. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 Who sold it to who? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, of course, they have to move along, and they're going to use it for bio. They're going to use it programmatically. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to run the course because they're going to do golf course management courses. They have physical training courses. Okay, but, but there is no conservation. There's no conservation. So we could I potentially. We, we can find out. We can find out. I'm just going to find out. Okay. But, so, but you're bringing this up by way of saying that this particular agent or whoever. That's just what he said. He, you know, he, he's telling me by saying that he knows Canadian because he just sold this property, right? Um, but. Um, Okay. But I kept telling him that we will not sell without a conservation oh. easement, and so he <coughs> said, "Fine, it's doable." Are, are you? Do you? Do you represent that you're speaking for the town when no, you say that? No, I just said I don't think you can bring this to the town if you're going to be. I, mean, I didn't say any. I, I was representing the town. I just said I don't think that the town is going to entertain a sale without a conservation easement. So I guess the other thing is, I know you, um, in your document, you s it looked like you spoke to Jeff Dugas at yes. Mall Speak. Jeff, and Jeff, um, yes. I know that he, um, Jim Urbano brought him in a couple of years ago right. to talk about this, to see what he was interested in. And um, he, he, you, you have here that he said two to three million dollars for the property. So I called him to see what, and he said he believes that um, he could sell it for $3 million if the purchaser felt that he could use the clubhouse. And if he couldn't, it would be more like $2 million. And so I asked him also what due diligence he'd done. You know, does he know the age of the infrastructure and the building and whatever is necessary? And he said, no, he'd like seen the property, but nothing in detail. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one thing I saw, I said, well, just for as, as an example, it was the only one I gave him, do you know about the um, environmental remediation? which a few years ago was priced out at $650,000, so quite Pretty a bit high money. And he said, well, no buyer would take on that responsibility. So any number he's suggesting would be that much less. I think one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is um, how much do we want to give up control of this property for how much money? You know, if we're going to get too little, maybe we just want to keep it ourselves as open space. Do we want to turn it over even with an easement and take it take away the enjoyment and benefit of it from town residents. Okay. So I think that's very important to think yeah. about right, right, right. in these. Can I um, comment? Sure. It might have been more appropriate at the end of number one, but I, I think what you said is very true. And one of the advantages <coughs> to, I guess, the last proposal, uh, passive recreation, or E, no, F, 
on our chart is that we do maintain the asset. We get to keep the asset, which means at any time, a proposal may come around that seems to suddenly make a lot of sense. Somebody comes up with something that we love, or of course comes up. So there is, there is that advantage to, yes, we would pay the note and continue to pay the roughly 400000 But So I just want to keep that in mind. That we're not necessarily saying, we're going to make a decision and that right. that property will never be touched again. Exactly. Maybe the golf course or somebody will come that's along right. during that time and blow our socks off. That's, that's right. right. Maria, from a legal point of view, I just a question, a question about, you say there's $149,000 of income taxes the town would get if it was sold to a private person for a golf course. I'm, I'm getting that, that number, I think. That just rep simply represents the... Um, the amount of taxes that the country, the Woodbridge Country Club itself paid the, oh, okay. back yeah. when but, but there was no conservation easement. Seven or eight million. But there was no conservation easement. That, that, right. that number goes down. What they pay for. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let, that number let, let, let Tony explain. Okay. So the, back when the uh, Woodbridge Country Club owned the parcel, the um, most of the value was in the buildings and the um, the acreage surrounding the buildings. Mm -hmm. The golf course itself had a very low value, an open space value, mm -hmm. and so it didn't really have much value at all. Mm -hmm. Just so you know where the 149 comes from. Right. Most of the value was in the buildings and in the outbuildings. So with a conservation <laughs> easement, that would change significantly? I don't I don't know what the impact would it's be. It's hard to know because it, to know. it was already low for the It was already space. low as it was because it was a golf but course and had open space. It would be less than $149,000. Right. But the other, uh, keep in mind um, the tax tax rates were different back then also. Also, right. So I, I, you know, you'd have to f do the calculation. Right. Okay. Okay. Third option. Third option: <coughs> the banquet facility only. You separate the clubhouse, the pool, uh, pool from the golf course. Market the clubhouse to banquet facility operator using commercial real estate agent. Base conservation restriction on land. Close the golf course entirely and demolish accessory golf buildings. Perform remediation work necessary on land. And then there are the there's the costing there. Um, again, these are very rough numbers, but still because respecting the fact that um, of those three reasons why we we're pr promoting the open space plan. Maria, on this one, <clears throat> you're suggesting that someone would pay a million and a half dollars for the clubhouse pool and parking, and right. the footnote has an estimate from two commercial realtors. Can you, uh, do you know who that was? I mean, you, Where is I guess, footnote? I don't know. Uh, it looks yeah. like footnote 12. No, the no, it's footnote, no, it's 12. footnote 12. 12. Yeah. yeah. Who, who was it who told you that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of contrary to what people have told us about the clubhouse. That's why I'm asking. No, uh, I think it was uh, Dugas. Uh, the, um, if I recall correctly, it was the people that worked for Dugas. That they thought someone would just buy the clubhouse yeah, area okay, for yeah, one point yeah, two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll double check. That. As as it is now. As it is now, yes. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I mean, I know there, but it's Bring not really to make a If I'm not mistaken, we had, that contract, you right? had, that we wow. had some catering or <laughs> banquet <laughs> outfit come in and look at it. I yes. can't remember. Tony they decided oh, that yeah, the building they was not worth them getting well, it. What it was going to cost to put the building in shape to have weddings or whatever. Well, I think Casper has said the same thing. But there was an, an, a, a very well-known That wasn't even now. That was oh, that was way back. Right. I think it was, now, I think it was going to be touring the building and seeing oh, it. Oh, it's got more. I, I'm, I'm but UNH, UNH came in. And yeah, we tried to do that, too. Yeah. Their right. school of hotel management. Yep. We were involved in that committee, and uh, right. their estimate to do what that. they had to do was $5 million. They asked them they would have to spend $5 million oh, yeah. to redo That's the whole crazy. facility to do what they wanted to do. So, I mean, I remember we it's not one. like well, that, that road had was a travel. That included a classroom so, setting so. also for yeah. culinary. Right. Even if you yeah. take yeah. For culinary education, the whole bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, right. there is value to it as, as, as I think it's not, well, I think the, the repairs can be done reasonably. Well, let me ask you a question, just right. so I understand this, because some of this <coughs> has been discussed in the past. When, when when a real estate, when a commercial real estate person comes in and says, I can market this for you, right. that involves time. Now, they're going to say it because they're going to say, I'm going to take, you know, 10% commission or whatever it is. So, 
you know, they're going to promote it. I understand that. But it also takes time. So right. are you saying that you think that the town should put all these other efforts on hold in, in order to let this play out? I just need to understand that. that is that no. what you're saying? I think you either have to, I think you, from the get-go you should decide whether you want to develop or do, do open, sp or one of these open space things. You need to decide that. And then whatever it is, then you put your, your eggs in that basket. I mean, if you have, we have to wait on <coughs> development as well. I mean, if, uh, well, I don't, I don't, well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen. Overnight. I mean, I think I think what we've been struggling with over the years is the lack of consensus on the part of the town as to what should be done. I mean, it's, well, you know, we haven't been sitting on our hands, I and know. every time, you know, I mean, I said to somebody recently, you know, there was a moment where we were trying to make a lot of people happy. Now I don't know if anybody can be happy. I mean, everybody's got very strong passions about this. Well, so this passion, mm -hmm. it seems to me. And I'm looking at your option number three. Mm -hmm. If you sign on with a commercial real estate agent, that commercial real estate agent isn't going to say, go ahead and try something else while I'm trying to market the property. I don't think so. You're right. So it would, it would mean standing back from other possibilities. Am I right? Yeah, pretty okay. much. All right, so I wanted to understand it. Yeah. But they're all viable options. But they're they are all viable well, options. They're, they're potentials. They're I don't options. know, I don't know, know that they're, they're options. options. They're, they're options. options. <laughs> Any uh, just on yeah. open space option three. I just want to clarify: Are we zoned properly to have a pure? No, that's facility? a commercial facility. So that would be a change in zoning as, as well. Yeah. Information: A banquet facility just would probably require a zone change from a residential to a right. commercial a business point. zone. Yeah. And okay. that would require, you know, we're complaining but, 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 so but it doesn't, it, it could give it special permit, not necessarily a, a zoning change because no. No, that's what you gave to, isn't Oak that what you gave to Oak Lane? No, no. Oak Lane went from a private club to a public club. That was mm. the issue with Oak Lane. Oh, they so. always had a, uh, a country club right to operate, but it was always a private club. And now that they were making it, Public, they had to have some <coughs> some spe special permit for the public part of their operation. I have a question. So this, this would this would in all likelihood require a change from the residential to, to a business. Because it would be a dedicated it's commercial, commercial use. use. But right. it will be dedicated to that place, not necessarily. Well, not, you know, the not same not thing I said earlier about you know restricting the zone. I guess you could try and restrict the, restrict the zone, but it would definitely be changing residential mm -hmm. to business mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the, the fifty five and older. Basically, it still would be residential. It would be a little twist on the residential uh, zone. Mm -hmm. There'd still be people living there. Yeah. This would be a little different. Right. A lot different, actually. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Um, any any other questions or discussion about any of these options that we've talked about? <clears throat> if not, um, I would like to ask the selectmen. I have on the agenda a possible executive session. Um, the justification for the executive session is Connecticut General Statutes 1 200, paren 6, paren capital D, with ha which has to do with the sale or purchase of land uh, by a municipality. And if people would like to talk further about how to move forward on some of these options now, I think it would be an appropriate time for the selectmen to do so. Um, I'll leave it up to all of you. But either way, we have to be done by 6. We have to be done by six, okay. so we can well, be done now, or we can take some time. Let me just uh, say something. Mm -hmm. um, the, the people that are really, I mean, the, the decision really is going to be made by the town, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, this is the fifth meeting about the golf course where we have had no public comment, correct? I don't know if that's correct. I have to look. Well, there was a September one where we presented the history and financials. The joint meetings. I think yeah, maybe this yeah. is the third. I'm not sure. Maria. And then there were two op uh, tours. Then there was one where you presented the um, development options from Toll Brothers. <coughs> and this one tonight. So I feel like, you know, going into executive session just tells the people that we are doing this on our own and not having them have any say. Oh. You, you think so? I think that it's really I think so. So, so um, 
do you think we should have all negotiation and discussion of sale publicly? Well, I think what, if we have an actual, you know, a bid for something or whatnot, maybe that has to go. But the choices, the options, should be discussed by public by by the public. Oh yeah, well definitely. I, I want to assure you. I want to assure everyone there will be ample opportunity for public comment. I think it was really important, and that's what I've spent the last couple of months doing, being sure that these boards come to some common understanding of the facts related to the country club. I've said it at every <coughs> meeting. There has been so much confusion, so many misstatements, and I think we've done a very good job, all of us together, to come together, ask the right questions, and get the facts out there. I am totally committed to the public hearing from the public, public discussion, and we will have ample opportunity. Since I've been first selectman, when I started out, we had nearly a dozen public meetings about the country club. I think that was a very strong start. Right now, it's important for us to get our facts together and facts straight so that when we have a meeting with the public, we all at least understand and we're not pulled in different directions about what the facts are. So I don't think you need have any concern about that. I assure you okay. that will happen. So with why do we need this executive, executive session? session. So, I am only proposing it if people would like to talk more if, about it. If I knew more about it, maybe I could say yes or no, but I don't I, What are we going to discuss? The topic about? of the executive session would be the potential sale of land. I think if we are interested in any of these proposals, it behooves us to have some discussion in executive session because we don't want to be speaking publicly to the person with whom we may be negotiating. I think it's in the town's best interest but, but that we, we were going to decide and then it has to go to the town. At this point, we're just trying to get to an option or two to put to the public and then have the public decide. Well, if you... So uh, why, how, what are we going to negotiate? I don't, I don't understand what we're negotiating. Well, that's interesting, Joe. I think that what Toll has proposed to us, I take it as a first proposal. I don't know how much negotiating room there is, but I have talked about and presented exactly what they've told us, I certainly would attempt to negotiate a better deal. And I think that's something very appropriately uh, discussed in executive session to protect the interests of the town. I've put it as potential. If you all don't want to do it, I'm good with no, that. No, I didn't say it. So, so we're going to so go into executive session to discuss negotiations with yes. and put Potential, yeah, potential for sale. It's negotiations for the potential sale of land, which we yes. I understand the statute, allowed. but I, I, I right. we never know from these agendas exactly what we want to speak. If that's we're gonna, if we're that gonna talk about topic. facts and figures and negotiations, yes. then I agree. That's a, and we so can't take any action in executive session. No, no. Absolutely I'm saying not. that so that the public understands. It's not like we there can is do, there's nothing we can really do. Right. The, the discussion in executive session remains confidential until some decision is made. There are no votes taken in executive session. After the executive session, that is made clear on the record. So I leave it to the members of the board. If anyone would like to make a motion to go into executive session, we can do that. If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion so we can decide that we should go into executive session for, and then if, I'm making a motion to, to go into executive session for this purpose. Okay. Of, uh, and then somebody wants, then we can decide whether or not we want to do it. I'll say that. Okay. Okay. Any discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. So we will ask everyone to Uh, the Board of Selectmen executive session is concluded. Uh, the board invited our town council, Jerry Weiner, to join us in the, in the session. No votes were taken during the executive session. Um, we're now back in our regular, our regular special meeting. Is there a motion, motion to adjourn? Thank you. Second. Second. Third. All those in favor. Aye. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, see you tomorrow.